Hello, my name is Joe Jaspers and I work with Tri-County Health Department. Today we'll be reading through a script for taking a sexual history as part of an example hepatitis A case investigation. This script is written as part of a larger interview with preceding questions about less sensitive topics such as prior travel and food exposures. Before asking sensitive questions about sex, it is important to have set the tone as friendly, respectful, and welcoming. If these questions make you feel uncomfortable, it may be helpful to practice asking these questions with others prior to talking to a case, so that your discomfort is not evident in your voice. Finally, this script is meant as a guide. It is often better for rapport building to not sound like you're reading from a script, but rather maintain a conversational tone. This is Grace Marks, also from Tri-County Health Department. Shortly, we'll be starting the mock interview. I'll be playing the role of epidemiologist, and Joe will be playing the role of the case. And now we'll begin. Hi, Mr. Jaspers. I'm now going to ask you a few questions about your sexual practices during this time period. Just so you know, I ask these questions to all cases with hepatitis A. These questions are as important as the questions about your recent travel and what you've been eating. This information helps me understand how this disease may be spreading and helps us to learn what prevention methods might help our community protect themselves. Like all other questions, this information is completely confidential. Do you have any questions before we get started? Uh, I guess I don't see why you have to ask questions about my sex life. Why do you have to ask questions about that? That feels pretty personal. Yeah, I know these questions can sometimes make people uncomfortable, but they are a standard part of our evaluation and an important part of your health. If you don't feel comfortable answering a certain question, we can move on. Please remember that this information is completely confidential. Uh, okay, I guess. All right, thanks. So, some people have sex with men, and some with women, and some with both. What I mean by sex is more than just penetration. It also includes oral sex and sexual playing. So, Mr. Jaspers, who do you have sex with? Well, I'm married, so I have sex with a woman. All right, great. Do you have sex with anyone else? Don't forget that whatever you tell me is completely confidential. Um, well, okay. I guess I do occasionally have sex with other guys. How many male partners would you estimate you've had during this time period we've been, we've been talking about? Um, let me think. I guess maybe about 10 male partners. And how many female partners have you had during this time period? Uh, just my wife. So I know sexuality is really complex, and some people identify as straight or gay or bisexual, regardless of who they have sex with. How, do you, how would you identify? Do you consider yourself gay, bi, hetero, or maybe there's another word that better fits your sexuality? I guess I would consider myself straight, heterosexual. How, how do you meet your sexual partners? For, for example, some people meet their partners online, on apps, or at adult stores, such as adult video arcades or bookstores. Well, I guess I've met most of my recent sexual partners at adult arcades. Which adult arcades in particular have you met um, partners during this time period? Uh, I usually go to this place called Circus Cinemas down the road from my work. Okay, that's, that's really helpful information. Have you met partners at any other adult stores during this period, such as Romantics, Adult World, or Kitty's Theater? No, just Circus Cinemas. Would you say that you know most of your partners, or are most of your partners anonymous? Uh, I think all my sex partners in the past few months have been anonymous. Do you ever hook up online through websites like Craigslist or use an app like Grindr? No, I don't. All right, and during this time period, have you met up with any partners at other locations like nightclubs, bars, or bathhouses? Now that I think about it, I have met a couple of partners at this club called Trax. All right, thanks. Um, I'm going to be a little more explicit here about the kind of sex that you've had during this time period, and this helps me understand if you could have gotten hepatitis A from a sexual encounter, or if it's possible that you could have passed the virus on to one of your sex partners. Wow, do you really need to know this? I know this can feel super uncomfortable, but by knowing what type of sex you're having, it does help me understand if you could be vulnerable to sexually transmitted infections, including hepatitis A. Also remember that everything you tell me is completely confidential. This is a safe space. No judgment. <sighs> okay, fine. All right. What kind of sexual contact have you had during this time period? Uh, genital sex, meaning penis in the vagina. Anal sex, meaning penis in the anus. Oral sex, meaning mouth on penis, vagina, or anus. 
Uh, with my wife, I've had vaginal sex. Okay. What about with your male partners? What type of sex do you have with your with your male partners? Um, I guess oral and anal sex. When you say that you have oral sex, are you typically the giving partner, meaning that you put your penis in your partner's mouth, or are you the receiving partner, meaning that your partner puts his penis in your mouth? I guess I do both, but usually I'm the giving partner. All right. And when you have anal sex, are you the top or the bottom partner? And by top partner, I mean that your penis is in contact with your partner's anus. And by bottom partner, I mean that your partner's penis is in contact with your anus. I'm usually the bottom partner. All right, how about, how about rimming? And by that I mean, do you put your tongue in contact with the anal rim of your partner's, or does your partner put his tongue in, t- in contact with your anal rim? Yeah, sometimes I've done rimming in my partner. What kind of sex have you had with the partners that you've met at circus cinemas during this time period? Uh, it would have been both oral and anal, and I guess some rimming too. And how about at the club tracks? Pretty sure I've only had oral sex with partners that I meet at tracks. What would you say your condom use is like with anal sex? Never, sometimes, most of the time, always? I'd say sometimes, maybe 50-50. And during this time period, do you know if you've ever had sex with someone who's had diarrhea? Uh, gross. No, not, not that I know of. Okay. And how about um, any sex with partners who were ill at that time? No, not to my knowledge. Sometimes people have sex after using drugs or drinking alcohol. In the last, um, during this time period, have you had sex using, um, have, have you had sex after using drugs or drinking alcohol? I guess now that I think about it, yeah. I usually smoke meth before going to circus cinemas. Did you use any other drugs during this time period? Mm, occasionally I use cocaine, but not that often. And do you ever inject drugs? No. I hate needles. I've never injected Mr. Jaspers, thank you so much for being willing to talk with me today and answer these questions. I know that some of these questions can seem really intrusive, but it does help me to understand how you could be at risk for getting hepatitis A and if others could have been exposed to the virus. Also, please remember that everything you've told me will remain confidential. Do you have any questions for me? No, thank you. So that inc- that concludes our mock interview. Of note, it is important to take the opportunity to educate the case about risk or or harm reduction. Uh, This education is guided by their reported behavior and is usually best given at the end of this section on sexual and drug-taking behavior. Examples of this risk reduction counseling um, can be as follows. For example, if the case reports having condomless sex, state that condoms help, help protect against HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases and should be used during each act of oral, anal, and vaginal sex. If the case reports engaging in rimming, state that rimming is one of the riskiest sexual practices for transmission of certain bacteria and viruses with fecal-oral spread. For example, hepatitis A and Shigella are spread from one person to another in this way. This happens because no matter how well someone wipes, there is always fecal bacteria at the anus. One way to minimize risk of spread of disease while rimming is to use a dental dam. If the case reports using intravenous drugs, state that IV drugs can cause skin infections because needles break that skin barrier which keeps germs out. If someone makes the decision to use IV drugs, it's important to always use a clean needle and only inject after cleaning the skin with soap and water or after using an alcohol swab. State that sharing needles or other drug paraphernalia makes one susceptible to a number of serious infections, including HIV and the hepatitis viruses. Needle syringe programs offer clean needles and a safe way to dispose of used needles. Colorado has many needle syringe programs. Ask the case if they are interested in learning about the closest program to them. Thank you again for taking the time to listen to this training in sexual history taking skills for case investigation.